Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. We've got some news about recent WWE Hall of Famer China today, as a special documentary about the ninth wonder of the world is in serious jeopardy. China, who sadly passed in 2016 at the age of 46, is supposed to be the subject of an episode of Autopsy, which looks into the final moments of many dead celebrities. According to a TV listing, the episode will focus on China's time in WWE, her abrupt departure in 2001, her four-year exile in Japan, and promises to reveal the truth behind her death with the help of forensics experts. This episode of Autopsy may never be aired though, as the former women's champion's mother is threatening legal action against the show. According to China's mother, Jan Le Kiu, the show cannot claim to be true, as she told the creators that nobody knows the real details of China's final hours. The official synopsis for China's episode is as follows. On April 20, 2016, professional wrestling legend China died from an overdose in her Los Angeles apartment. Once celebrated as the ninth wonder of the world, China's life unraveled after she left WWE and she became infamous as a casualty of drug and alcohol abuse. After a mysterious four-year-long exile in Japan, China returned to the US intent on reinventing herself, only to die alone nine months later at the age of just 46. In this episode, expert coroner and forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Hunter unpacks the secrets of China's autopsy report and together with accounts from friends, pieces together the truth about China's tragic death. In a letter issued to the show's creators, LeCue said, I want to make it clear to you, very, very clear, that no one, no one really knows what happened during Joni's final hours, so you can't possibly air something on the supposed truth because you don't know it. I don't know it." LeCue requested an answer by this past Monday, and, after not receiving one, has taken the matter further. In a second letter, LeCue threatened to take the show's coroner, Dr. Michael Hunter, to court about how she and her daughter's legacy have been treated. LeCue didn't stop there, as she also called out Carrie Newton, who plays China in the show, after the actress said she, quote, had a blast playing the deceased superstar. These words obviously didn't sit well with LeCue, who called the comments morbid and disgusting, and questioned why Newton would take on the role before checking with China's estate. We have to agree with LeCue on this one, as even if Newton had fun with the role, she really should have chosen her words more carefully. LeCue also said how as China's sole beneficiary, she will work to defend her daughter's legacy from anyone she feels won't handle it with due care. If you continue on with this and defame China or tarnish her legacy in any way, you are really opening yourself up to defamation. Not to mention personal and emotional duress on the part of myself and her family because of what you are doing. You need to be very clear that as her mother and her sole beneficiary, I am going to vigorously defend my daughter and her estate, protect her legacy from vultures like you who want to drag it through the mud, and do whatever I can to stop you and those like you from making a buck off of her tragedy both now and in the future. In a response, Reels, the company behind Autopsy, responded to the claims made by China's mother, claiming that the show is praised for its scientific accuracy and strives to provide closure for both the friends, families, and fans of the deceased celebrities they have covered. They said, Autopsy, the last hours of, responsibly explores the circumstances of the passing of well-known and genuinely loved celebrities who the public cares about immensely. The Reels series generates much feedback from our viewers, ranging from fans who tell us it provides closure, medical professionals who praise its scientific accuracy, and many who gain helpful perspective of health issues that might not otherwise receive attention, like Karen Carpenter, who brought anorexia into the public consciousness, and more recently, with Prince, whose passing focused attention on the opioid epidemic. It's unclear whether the episode detailing the final hours of China's life will ever be aired, but this isn't the first time LeCue has clashed with others about her daughter's life. Shortly after her passing, a different documentary was being filmed about the death of the ninth wonder of the world, though LeCue put a stop to it before it was released. And in April last year, she and China's ex-manager Anthony Anzaldo clashed when the latter tried to raise funds to put the Hall of Famer's ashes on display. 
aiming to raise $25,000 on GoFundMe on Zaldo's campaign was criticized by Lequeu, who called it a scam and claimed that the manager had no legal right to be in possession of her ashes. On April 20, 2016, many media outlets reported that Laura was found dead in her home in Redondo Beach, California. She was 46 years old. A few days later, they also reported that her manager, Anthony Anzaldo, had become concerned when Laura did not post updates or content to her usual social media outlets for several days and subsequently found her body in her apartment. Initial police reports stated she probably died of an accidental drug overdose or natural causes. Anzaldo suggested that any overdose was accidental, claiming that she was prescribed drugs but tended to use them improperly. Her brain was donated to science to study the effects of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. A memorial service was held in Los Angeles on June 22, 2016. Among the attendees to her memorial were wrestlers Molina, Rob Van Dam, Sean Waltman, and Johnny Mantell, actors C. Thomas Howell and Barry Williams, Dennis Hoff, owner of The Bunny Ranch, and singers Coolio and Baby Bash, who also performed during the memorial. China was cremated and her ashes were scattered into the Pacific Ocean, which is why China's mother says that China's ex-manager Anthony Anzaldo holding her ashes was pure rubbish. A report of her autopsy was released in December 2016. Laura died on April 20th of an overdose of alcohol, combined with the anxiety drugs diazepam and nordezepam, painkillers oxycodone and oxymorphone, and sleeping aid temazepam. While fans of the legendary superstar may never see the autopsy episode air, they will be able to play as China in the upcoming WWE 2K20 game, the first video game appearance by the ninth wonder of the world since 2000's WWF SmackDown 2 Know Your Role. It's clear that LeCue is still hurting after the loss of her daughter, and we can only hope that she, and everyone involved, can come to an agreement that brings everyone some form of closure. Guys, what do you think about this whole situation? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. We've got some news about Ronda Rousey, as the former Raw Women's Champion continues to be one of the biggest stars in WWE despite not appearing in months. Following her WrestleMania 35 loss to Becky Lynch, the Hot Rod's first ever loss in WWE, Rousey has taken an extended leave of absence from the company and reportedly wants to start a family with husband and fellow UFC star Travis Brown. Those plans may change though, as this week on Barnburner Radio, Sonya Deville was asked about the hot rod, and she said she even pitched a match between the two. Much like Rousey, the SmackDown Live superstar joined WWE with an MMA background, boasting a 2-1 record in the octagon before joining pro wrestling. Speaking to Barnburner Radio, Deville spoke about how a story between the two about their respective MMA careers writes itself. But though she pitched the match, nothing ever happened. She said, I actually pitched it to Triple H when she was here, but it didn't happen. We didn't have enough time. Only got one year, but when she comes back, I look forward to making it happen. I really think we can do some special stuff inside the squared circle. Though a match between the two former MMA fighters would be hard-hitting to say the least, time will tell whether Rousey ever returns to the ring. And if so, it's unclear if she and DeVille will face off in a one-on-one -on -one match. One thing for certain is that DeVille is clearly eager to put her hair up and square up to the baddest woman on the planet, and a win over Rousey would be a career-changing moment for her and put DeVille in clear contention for singles gold on the main roster. We're going back in time now as when Stone Cold Steve Austin threw The Rock's Intercontinental Championship off of a bridge in late 1997 the rattlesnake created a lot of buzz. After doing so, the Texas rattlesnake would go on to have one of the most incredible careers of all time, so it's not surprising that current superstar Elias is thinking of doing something similar. Elias, who captured the 24-7 championship on this week's Raw, has proven he's a much tougher champion than his predecessors and was ambushed at a recording studio earlier this week by Drake Maverick. Able to kick out of Maverick's schoolboy pin, the singer-songwriter battered the British superstar and recently teased forfeiting the gold on social media. In a photo, Elias posted a picture of the 24-7 title in front of a pond, claiming that as he considers himself a champion even without a title, he was thinking about giving the belt to one of the ducks. Sure, it may not be as exciting as Austin throwing the IC belt over 20 years ago, 
but Elias could give himself a ton of heat if he threw away one of the most popular parts of WWE in 2019. Since the title's launch just a few months ago, we've had the first female 24-7 champion crowned in Kelly Kelly, the first pregnant champion Maria Kanellis, and the first co-champions recently with The Revival. It looks like Elias may be preparing fans to see the first ever feathered 24-7 champion, though we're not sure which superstar will be willing to get a pin over a duck. And finally today we're looking at Rusev, as the Bulgarian brute hasn't exactly had the best year of his career in 2019. After losing the United States title on the Royal Rumble kickoff show to Shinsuke Nakamura, Rusev later teamed with the King of Strong Style, but would also come up short at WrestleMania 35. Since then, the Bulgarian and wife Lana have taken a break from the ring, and though Rusev has spent most of that time relaxing, he's also been working hard at changing up his look. This week, the former US champion recently surprised a lot of fans with a picture on his Instagram story, adding an incredible mustache to his face. The new look has certainly been met with a lot of praise so far, and to be fair, Rusev does make it work. The super athlete also used this opportunity to gain some attention for the prep meals he also enjoys so much. Though Rusev's new work is clearly working for him, we have to wonder whether he'll still have it or end up shaving it before he and Lana make the return to WWE TV. Well guys, that's our news for today. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our previous video. 10 huge shocking WWE 2019 rumors you need to know about. Also check out our other high rated videos by clicking at the upper right hand corner or down in the description field. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a single new video. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and as always, thank you for watching.